Okay, so in this video, we'll kind of extend that long, mo long model to make kind of a more general version of it and use that general long model to see how that kind of introduces the idea of weighted averages. And we'll talk a little bit about weighted averages. Okay, so let's assume we have a more uh, you know, general long model than uh, the one we had in the previous video. We'll have a general long model. will still be super simplified, but it'll be you know, uh, a little bit less specific to an adult male with an exact volume of six liters. So let's say that the lung volume is now going to be uh, V liters, and then that breath volume is going to be W instead of 0.6. Okay, so this will be W liters that you'll be exhaling and inhaling with each breath. And then let's say that the outside concentration of whatever chemical we're interested in thinking about the exchange of is going to be given by gamma. Okay? So then... Okay, so then our, our long model that we had before looks like this. Then in red, I'll put these, these concentrations. So or our, our volumes will be here. So this is original volume V. And at this time, it has volume V minus W. Right? Okay. We don't put them down. Volume V, V minus W. And then volume V again. Right? And so, you know, during these different steps, we're going to exhale W liters. And then at this step, we're going to inhale W liters. So we're going from V to V minus W when we exhale W liters, and then we go back up to V minus W plus W to get back to V when we inhale. Okay? So then, um, if we're thinking about the concentration of whatever chemical we're interested in, and then the original time we'll have C, T, millimoles per liter, right? Whatever concentration we have for the breath. And then when we exhale out, we're exhaling out air, which has concentration C millimoles per liter. And um, if we turn that into moles, right, the number of moles of that molecule in this uh, lung before the breath is going to be the volume times the concentration C times CT millimoles. In the breath we exhale, we're going to exhale W times CT millimoles, right, which means that you know, at the next time, right, this intermediate step, we still have the original CT millimoles per liter concentration, but the number is different, right? It'll be V minus W times CT millimoles, right? Since we started with VCT, we need WCT, V minus WCT millimoles. Okay, and then when we're going to inhale, we're going to inhale this new concentration, is gamma millimoles per liter, right? So we're inhaling gamma times W moles or millimoles of this new, um, from the outside air, which has a different concentration of this chemical. So now we're inhaling gamma times W millimoles. Okay, and so then we're interested in finding the new concentration after we've inhaled some of this uh, outside air. Right. So let's do it by looking at the number of molecules, right? So after the step, we had V minus WCT millimoles, and then we inhaled the gamma W millimoles. So the new number of molecules after this breath is going to be V minus W times CT, right, from here, the amount we started with, plus the amount we inhaled, plus gamma W, and that'll be the number of molecules we have in millimoles. Okay, so that means that the new concentration after exhaling and inhaling is then going to be C, T plus 1. It's going to be this number of molecules, V minus W, C, T plus W, divided by the volume, right? Now give us millimoles per liter. Okay, so this is our, you know, discrete time model. Similar one than the one we had before, but now we have Vs. W's and gammas in place of the numbers that we had in the previous. Okay, and let's simplify this a bit. Okay, if I rewrite this, let's split up a fraction. If I have C, T plus 1, it's going to be V minus W divided by 
times C plus gamma times W over D. This is the same thing. I just rewrote it a little bit. I'm just splitting up the uh, numerator. Okay, so then if I take another step, right, this is going to be D over D gives me 1 minus W over D plus gamma times W over D. Okay, and then here's where we're going to say, hey, the volume is not even appearing by itself anywhere, right? It's always appearing with W, right? So whenever we're looking at this problem, now W and D are always together in this ratio. So let's say, okay, let's, let's be, uh, generalize this by, by calling that a new number. Let's call that Q. Okay, that's the fraction of our breath compared to our, our, vo our volume of lung, right? So then if we make this, uh, change variables, then CT plus 1 is now 1 minus Q, CT plus gamma times Q. This is a Q. Okay? And so then this is, you know, the same model with a lot more digestible form, where Q is, you know, the fraction of breath volume over lung volume. Right? So that's kind of the, the exchange volume. Right. So the kind of fraction of air that you're exchanging every time with the outside environment. Okay. And so if you if you notice, you know, in the system, we still have the same equilibrium that we had before, right? That if we make the you know, if we guess that the equilibrium is at gamma, the outside concentration, right, then, you know, CT plus 1 is 1 minus Q times gamma plus, right, so if I do this out, that's gamma plus gamma minus Q gamma plus Q, right, so these two cancel out because they're the same, and we're left with gamma, right, so we input C star equals gamma, we get back out the next concentration after a full breath is going to be the same as it was before. So that is indeed our equilibrium, right? So equilibrium is equal to the outside concept, even when we make this perfectly general. Okay? That's the first note here. The second thing to note is that red second note is that Q, which again was this W over D, right, this fraction of your breath divided by your uh, lung volume, right, this Q is always between 0 and 1, right, you can't breathe out more air than you had in your lungs, and the smallest number of, you know, the smallest amount of air you can breathe out is 0. Okay, so Q is between 0 and 1, which makes this form here, right, this 1 minus Q times CT plus gamma times Q, or let me write this, Q times gamma, uh, Q times, right, this concentration, the next time step, is what's called the weighted average, is a weighted average of the concentration Previous time, right? Old concentration. And gamma, the outside concentration. Okay? So every time we're doing this whole exchange process, we're actually ending up with just some sort of weighted average of those two concentrations, where the weight is given by Q. Okay? And so weighted average in general, right? Notes here. Sometimes it has a little bit of trouble. But basically, if I define a weighted average, so this isn't just nonsense. So, a weighted average of, say, two numbers, say x and y, is a way to average them in some way that isn't just giving them both equal representation. Right? So, you know, you use this weight. 
could wait here, right? So then the weighted average would be Q times X plus one minus Q times Y, where Q has to be between zero and one. Okay, and this is, there we go. Right, so this is the weighted average, right? And so what we have up here, is indeed a weighted average with weight Q, where I'm giving weight Q to my outside concentration and weight one minus Q to the concentration that are, that is you know in my lungs at the first time step or the previous time step. Okay, and so you know maybe I'll do a, you know a concrete example of this. Let's say we had two numbers, right? X equals two y equals 5. Let's find the weighted average with weight q equals 0 0.8. Right, so it's some, some fraction between 0 and 1. So here we're going to give weight q to x and weight 1 minus q to y. Okay. So in this case, my q is 0 0.8, so that's 0 0.8x plus 0.2y. So 80% of this average is going to be weighted towards x, the other 20% will be weighted towards y. If I plug in my numbers, that's 0 0.8. 2, 0 0.2 times 5 gives me 1.6 plus 1.0, which gives me 2.6. Okay, and if you think about these two numbers, right, 2 and 5, 2.6 is closer x than y, right, and that's because we gave it more weight in this average, right? Because Q was 0.8, so we gave weight 0.8 to X and only weight 0.2 to Y. Okay, but let's say we gave it the opposite weight. In numbers, but opposite weights, right? So let's say, you know, Q is going to be 0 0.2. So our weighted average this time is going to be Q times X plus 1 minus Q times Y. Right, so it's going to be 0.2 times X plus 0.8Y. So we've swapped the weights. And now in this case, right, we have 0.2 times 2, 0.85. So I end up with 0 0.4 times 4.0. That gives me 4.4, .4, right? And 4.4 .4 is now closer to y than x, right? Because we gave more weight to it, right? Y was 5, x was 2, right? So when we weight y more heavily, then our weighted average is closer to y. Okay, what if we weigh them exactly the same? Same weights, right? So in order to give them the same weights, we, we want Q to be 1 minus Q, okay? and Q between 0 and 1. Right? It's the only kind of number that works here is Q is 0 0.5, right? So in that case, our weighted average would be QX plus 1 minus QY, right? That gives us 0 0.5X. Plus 0.5y, right? So if I do this out, that's 1 plus 2.5. That gives me 3.5, which is right in the middle of the two numbers, right? And so when they have equal weights, this is exactly equal to a normal average, right? right? If you remember the formula for an average, that's x plus y over 2. Right, and what we have is a half x plus a half y, right? Half x plus one half y. And when the weights are exactly the same, now we just reduced our weighted average down to a normal average. Okay? A normal average is going to be right in between the two numbers. Two and five, right in the middle of three point. Okay, so nothing nothing fancy going on here. Okay. But weighted averages are really useful for thinking about these like mixing problems. So now weighted average averages are useful 
for these mixing problems. Okay, so I'll do one more example where let's say we have a bunch of different liquids. Oh my leak. Great. Okay, so let's say we have one container of some liquid, and I have you know one liter of this, and it's a salt solution, and maybe the concentration here is gonna be 10 millimoles per liter. Right, and then I want to add this to a different beaker with maybe a different volume. Let's say it has three liters and a different concentration of salt. This is going to have 5.0 millimoles per liter. Right, I want to know what happens when I add these together. We get a new solution, make it red. Right, and this new solution has, you know, the same two solutions mixed together. Right, so this new volume is going to be. V1 plus V2, that'd be four liters. And the new concentration is kind of the question here. It's not it's not clear how we can immediately grab this, this new concentration. Right? So, so the way I kind of derive the discrete time system is we say, okay, this concentration, right, is gonna be the number of molecules of salt in beaker one plus the number of molecules in beaker two, right? So the concentration times the volume gives me the number of moles in this beaker. Concentration times volume gives me the number of moles in that beaker. So that would give me the total number of moles in my new mixture. And then I would divide by volume or my V1 plus V2, right? So if I did this out, you know, I would get Ten millimoles on top, and then this would give me fifteen millimoles divided by four liters. That's twenty-five over four millimoles per liter, or six point two five millimoles. That's that's kind of the the slow way to do this, but you could also solve this with a weighted average. Right? And the key thing here is to recognize what the weights are, right? So in my new solution, right, this mixture, my mixture has 25% of beaker one, right? My new mixture is 25% beaker one and 75% beaker two, right? Because this was Volume one over B is one liter over four, which is one four, 25 percent. Right? So the original volume of beaker one divided by my new volume is three quarter. So my new mixture is 25 percent of the original beaker one. And then the other 75 percent is liquid from beaker two, right? Because B2 over B three liters, four liters, three quarters, or 75 percent. Okay, so I'm going to use these as my weights. Okay, so then in this case, right, my new concentration, I'm going to say is a weighted average Q times C1 plus one minus Q B2, right? And these weights are going to just come from the amount you know, the percentage of each liquid in my mixture. So my first weight will be 25, 25% concentration one plus 75% concentration. Right? And these do add up to one and, you know, one of them is Q, then the other is one minus. But I could have labeled them the other order and it wouldn't have made the difference here because I'm going to end up with the same number. Okay, so then in this case, I have 0.25 times 10 gives me 2.5 millimoles per liter. 0.75 out of 5 gives me 3.75 liter. I add these up. I end up with the same answer, 6.25 millimoles per liter. So it's a lot more, you know, it's a lot quicker of a calculation to just decide what percentage of each liquid is represented in my mixture. And I use those as my weights in this weighted average here. Okay? And you can apply this, you know, where it really comes in handy is when you're trying to do more than two liquids. 
and so these weighted averages also apply to you know more than two components. Right? So if I had the same sort of setup, right? Let's say I had the same setup, I had one liter of 10.0 millimoles per liter, right? This is my salt concentration in liquid one. My liquid two is three liters, five millimoles per liter. And let's say I had a third mixture in here, one liter of two millimoles per liter, right? And I add these together, right? My new volume would be five liters. My new concentration though, that's the question, right? If I look at, I wanna write this as a weighted average, right? So I need to represent these as percents of the original volume, of the total volume, right? So one liter over five, right? That gives me 20% or 0 0.2 for my weight. Okay, three out of five for my second mixture, right? Three liters over five gives me 60% or 0 0.6. And the last one is another one over five, which gives me 20% or 0 0.2, right? So my new mixture, five liters, is 20% liquid one, then that's the weight I use for that concentration. And it's 60% liquid two and 20% liquid three. So my concentration is gonna be 20% concentration one, plus 60% concentration two, plus 20% concentration three. So it's a weighted average, and instead of using Qs and one minus Qs, these are my weights, and the weights have to add up to one. Right, they have to add up to one. Right, so 20 plus 60 plus 20 gives me 100%. So my weights add up to one, so I've kind of represented uh, everything that I need to represent here. And then if I compute this, right, I have 0 0.2 times 10, plus 0 0.63, sorry, five is my other mixture, and 0 0.2 times. This is all in millimoles per liter. My concentration is two plus three plus 0 0.4 millimoles per liter, or 5.4 millimoles per liter, right? And so it's quickly, you know, if I were to you know, multiply these together to get the millimoles, the number of molecules, and add it to those molecules, add it to those, and divide by the total volume, I'm doing a lot of math. Whereas here, I just decide what are the weights, do a weighted average that gives me the right concentration of my final mixture. Right? So I mix these three together, they all have different uh, concentrations, and end up with five liters of salt solution at 5.4 millimoles per liter. And if you know this, you know, what is it most like? Well, if you look at my concentrations, it's closest to this one, okay? This new concentration is closest to this concentration, which made up 60% of the solution, right? So I kind of weighted this concentration more heavily in my average when I computed this new concentration. It makes sense that I weighted more heavily because there's more of it than there are of the other two, okay?